Alright guys, so uh, everyone get out. The uh, worksheet entitled Guinea Pig. Um, this particular video goes out to a very famous guinea pig by the name of Bubba. I hope uh, you're enjoying your days of uh, running in circles on that little, um, I, don't, I don't know what the name is, and uh, hanging out in your cage. So Bubba, this one's for you. All right, so John tosses four fair coins. What's the probability that all four coins will land tails up? All right, so he's, he's tossing four coins. Now, what's the probability that the first coin will land tails up? Well, that one's obviously a one and two, right? It's a 50-50 shot, either heads or tails. What's the probability the second coin will land tails? Well, that's also one and two. What's the probability the third coin will land tails? One and two. Fourth coin, one and two. Now you multiply all these together. Remember, when you multiply fractions, all you do is go straight across. So one times one times one times one is one. Two times two is four times two is eight times two is 16. Therefore, the probability is one and 16. Answer choice J for that one, okay? Pretty simple. Let's move on now to this question about the hand towel. So a hand towel is similar to a face towel. The hand towel has a length of 18 inches and a width 12 inches, all right? If the face towel has a length of nine, what is the width of the face towel? So what I would do is go ahead and draw it, okay? Draw the figure and then we'll come up with, uh, with a proportion to solve this. So we draw the uh, regular towel, the, the hand towel, a length of 18 inches, and a width of 12 inches. If the face towel, alright, so it's going to be a little smaller, has a length of 9 inches, then what is the width? First of all, you could look at this and say, okay, 9 is half of 18, so therefore this must be half of 12, 6. Let's also set up a proportion, and I want to be more specific. Remember, I said a good way to come up with a proportion when we did it is actually write words, okay? We're going to go length to width. All right, so what's the length of the big one? 18. What is the width of the big one? 12. Equals the length of the small one, 9, over the width of the small one, x. Now we just cross multiply and divide. 18 times x is 18x. Equals 12 times 9 is uh, 108. Now I'm going to divide by 18. Divide by 18. Do that in your calculator, 108 divided by 18, and you're going to find that x is going to come out to be 6 inches, right? You can check it, 6 times 8 is 48, 6 times 10 is 60, 48 and 60 make 108, okay? That's another way to check it, therefore your answer choice is going to be A. So in the figure below, A, C, E, is congruent to BCD. All right, so uh, let's look here real quick. We're trying to figure out the length of AB. Now, what is AB? AB is actually this right here, okay? So the way we're going to do that is since we know that a, this big triangle is uh, similar, I'm sorry, I said congruent early, earlier, that means similar. Similar to this, congruent, remember, would be this. That's congruent, that's similar, okay? So, when I'm drawing this, what is the length of AB? Well, <clears throat> I think the easiest way to do this is to, uh, you know, is to come up with um, proportions, or you could even draw the triangles again. So let's draw kind of scale versions of the triangles. This one is BCD. BCD is 2, 2.5, um, and this one is also going to be 2, just because you can kind of see that it is an isosceles triangle. Okay. Um, then you got the other one, it's a little bigger, I'm not going to draw the whole thing just because it's, you know, it's too big. But, uh, so I'm going to draw here A, C, E. A, C, we're not sure of, we'll call X. This bottom is 12, okay? So now we can come up with a proportion. We can say 2 to X equals 2.5 to 12. 
All right. So now we cross multiply. 24 equals 2.5x. We're going to divide by 2.5, divide by 2.5. So therefore, x is going to be 24 divided by 2.5 which is going to be, I'm, not, I'm actually even going to have to do that with the calculator myself because obviously 2.5 goes into 25, 10, but then you have 1 over 2.5. So 1 over 2.5 is going to be what? So you got two parts, I think that's 20%? No, 0.5 goes into that 3 and 5, 3 or 60%. Let's see what happens. No, not 60%. 3 parts, 0. 0.5. 1 over 2.5, that's going to be 5 parts, that'd be 2 parts. Ah, 40%, okay? So your answer when you do 24 divided by 2.5 should be uh, 9.6, I believe. Let's see if I'm right. 24 divided by 2.5 is going to be 9.6. Alright. So, let's see if, uh, so what's the length of AB? Now, it does not ask for AC. Notice this 9.6 is AC. So how do we determine AB? Well, we need to subtract off this 2 to get AB. So you're going to do 9.6 minus 2, which is obviously going to be 7.6F. So be real careful on that, okay, um, to make sure that you put the, uh, that you subtract off that 2, okay. So this 9.6 minus 2 is going to be 7.6, okay. A lot of us will miss that, do all the work, and we'll put 9.6 because we don't we're not careful in, uh, you know, being meticulous. Number one. Number one. Uh, it's not it's labeled number one, but uh, it's not really number one, right? So this one. A cylindrical waste basket has a radius of five inches. If the volume is 1,884 cubic inches, what is the best estimate of the height of the waste basket? Okay. Well, remember, how do we do volume of a cylinder? Volume of a cylinder equals area of the base, okay, remember that B means area of the base times the height, okay, so the volume is 1,884 equals area of the base, okay, um, so does it give us, it has a radius of 5 inches, okay, so area of the base is going to be pi times radius squared, right, base is pi r squared. So pi times 5 squared, so the area of the base is 25 pi, okay? So we have 25 pi, and we're looking for h, okay? Let me reduce this 25 pi even more, okay? What is 25 pi? So 1,804. Taylor, can somebody the office, Miss Taylor? Second pi is going to be 78.5, okay, when you do that, so 78.5 h. Now all you have to do is divide by that 78.5 to get that H alone. Divide by 78.5, divide by 78.5. Therefore, H is going to equal... I want to show you a cool trick here. Look, if you have uh, 78.5, you're trying to do 1,884 divided by that. Isaac Martinez, please come by the office. Isaac Martinez. So what you're going to want to do is actually divide. You're going to press second, then go down here to this negative, right, and press that. That's going to do 1,884 divided by answer. That's going to actually divide by this previous answer, so you're going to get a more exact number, okay? So the correct answer is going to be 23.98.99. All right, so 23... Point nine nine is going to round out to your answer of B, 24 inches, okay? So just be careful on that one. It's not too hard. You just have to remember how to solve for your H, okay? So now let us look at number two. Not really number two. It's the fifth one, but... Okay, the rental cost of a storage unit at Joe's Storage is 75% per cubic foot. What is the rental cost of the storage unit with the dimensions shown below? Okay, so what you're going to do is figure out the volume. When you figure out volume is going to be in cubic feet, then you're going to have to deal with this 75% per cubic foot. So you're just going to multiply by 75 cents to get the total price. 
So how do you figure out volume of, uh, of this? Now you can do the volume, this is a prism, right? This is the top, this is the base. Okay, so volume equals B times H. So what is the, and what is B? The area of the base. So the volume equals the area of the base, which is 6 times 10, right? Times the height, which is 8, okay? Notice also when you have the, a rectangular prism, you can always just do length times width times height. 6 times 10 times 8. Look, 6 times 10 times 8. Only thing is, the length times width of the 6 times 10 is going to be the area of the base. Okay, so you can always keep that in mind when you're doing rectangular prisms. You can always multiply those three sides. So we're going to multiply these together. 6 times 10 is 60 times 8 is 480. Of course, that's an answer choice. But that is not the right answer. Why? Because we're only paying 75 cents per cubic foot. If this was $1 per cubic foot, we would pay $480 for that storage space. But we're actually paying 75 cents per cubic foot. Okay, so we're going to multiply this by uh, 75 cents. Okay, so uh, 120 goes into that four times, right? So 75% is three fourths. Therefore, the answer is going to be 360 dollars. Now, if you want, go ahead and do that on your calculator. 480 times 0.75 to prove to yourself that the answer is indeed 360. Okay, so let's go. Oh. The cap fell, I went to close it and be smooth, and actually then I just got it over my hand, so that was kind of unfortunate. So let's look at number three. Estimate the total surface area of the cone shown below. Okay, surface area. One of the most complicated um, things we have to come up with, but uh, not too hard, right? Oh look, it's already perfectly underlined. Total surface area of the cone shown below. So what is surface area of a cone? Well, what you, all you're going to do is you're going to look here and you're going to go surface area of a cone and it's total. So remember, lateral is just the sides. Total is all of it. Equals, there's two equations. Pi R L plus pi R squared or pi R L plus R. Guys, this is going to be easier. Okay, it's just a remember of what's this L. Well, I'm going to show you. So pi R times L plus R. So S equals pi R times L plus R. Well, what is the L? Remember, this guy is the L, the length from the top down to the base, okay? So this is our L. This is 6 all the way across, right? So the diameter is 6, right? The diameter is 6, therefore the R is going to be 3. Now we have everything we need. We just need the 5 and the 3. They just put this 4 there to trick you, okay? Only time you need the height is when you're doing volume of a cone. So let's plug it in. S equals pi times R, which is 3, times L plus R, which is 5 plus 3, right? So S equals pi times 3. 3 and 8 make 24, right? So S equals 24 times pi. So you're going to do 24 times pi equals 75.4, which uh, we round off to 75. Now, what are the units? They're going to be yards squared, guys, because we're talking about area. Anytime you're talking about area, you're talking about squares, okay? So 75 yards squared is going to be the answer to that one. Answer choice D, okay? And that's everything for guinea pigs. So um, I hope you all enjoyed, and uh, Bubba, if you're watching, you know, this is for you.